Hi guys, let's talk about coronary artery disease. We also abbreviate it as CAD or we call it CAD sometimes, um, but it's really coronary artery disease. So what is it? What is this? What is this disease? Well, this is a, a disorder or a disease of the arteries around um, your heart muscle, okay? So we call this the um, coronary circulation is what provides nutrients and oxygen and that blood to the heart muscle. So what happens is that these blood vessels, specifically the arteries, um, they get filled uh, with fatty deposits and just plaque, which we call arteriosclerosis, okay? And that is the main cause of coronary artery disease. These um, just basically fat buildup uh, within the walls of the arteries. Now, when this happens, just like this picture here, it literally prevents blood flow to flow, you know, uh, adequately um, and provide the nutrients to the muscle because it makes the lumen very narrow or sometimes it occludes it very, uh, almost like 100%. So then your blood is not flowing uh, properly. Now, this could happen for many reasons. And some of the uh, people that are at risk are males above the age of 45 and females above the age of 55. Why males? Anybody that drinks, smokes, or have a lot of stress, emotional stress, diabetics, people that are obese or lack exercise, people that have a bad diet that is maybe high in saturated fat or cholesterol or sodium. So someone that has a high LDL, which is your bad cholesterol, or someone that has low HDL, which is considered the good cholesterol. Um, and individuals that suffer from hypertension. Now imagine if you have all or many of these, yeah, you're at higher risk for coronary artery disease. So who, how do we diagnose it? Well, here's where it comes tricky, okay? We can diagnose it by doing a lipid panel. Now, there's other things that we can do, but let's talk about the lipid panel first because that's usually the more common, easy to go, you know, in your routine um, doctor's appointment every year. So it's recommended that an individual gets a lipid panel every year once they reach that middle age, okay? So when your lipid panel is showing a total cholesterol of more than 200, it says that you're a higher risk for, or you can possibly have CAD. Another thing is if your HDL is less than 40 in males and less than 50 in females. And now let's, re let's review that HDL is that good cholesterol. The reason for that is because the good cholesterol sort of eats in a way, it, it, it kind of eats the bad cholesterol or the bad LDL, uh, the LDL. So we want that number high. Um, Another one is if you have LDL, which is that bad cholesterol, more than 130, and your triglycerides more than 150. So here's a little trick that I'll give you, a little sort of way to remember. This is how we diagnose it, okay? If someone is showing this in their lipid panel, however, someone that, let's say, doesn't have CAD, and wants to prevent it, then they want a cholesterol that is less than 200 and, of course, a high HDL. So I remember D HDL because I want it high to prevent it. Um, or 
LDL, I want it low because I want to prevent it. So that's another way of looking at it. If you're looking, how do I remember these numbers? Um, yes, yeah, so, but the, the numbers that I have here are to diagnose it, okay? Another way to, uh, to diagnose is by a catheterization, like going in and actually visualizing that these arteries are clawed and, and they're narrowed. Um, you can do a stress test just to see the demand of oxygen in the muscle and the patient's having some rhythm change or symptoms of shortness of breath or whatnot, as well as cardiac enzymes, which would say if the muscle is being injured whenever, whenever it has higher demands of oxygen. So how can we prevent it? Well, we can do many things to prevent it. And in fact, only one thing does not fix the problem or prevents coronary artery disease. It's a mix of all of this. Um, medication is not the only uh, way of preventing it and it's not the only treatment. It has to be in combination with a good diet that is low in saturated fat and cholesterol, that it's uh, high in whole grains, carbohydrates, fruit, and vegetables, as well as fiber, and also an increase in the consumption of omega-3 fatty acids like salmon, tuna, or flaxseed. The, the omega-3s are good fats. They're your basically your HDL, and we want it high because it eats the bad cholesterol. Another thing is exercising. We want to exercise at least minimum of 30 minutes of moderate activity most days of the week, okay? We're, we're talking about more than five days a week. Some of examples of moderate activity could be walking, cycling, hiking, swimming, anything that kind of gets your heart going and beating fast. You want to monitor your weight and not be obese. Losing weight actually helps. You want to control your blood pressure, not develop any diabetes, and have a sort of... Um, low or normal blood pressure according to uh, the guidelines, less than 120 over 80. You want to stop smoking, drinking, or any excessive emotional stress on a daily, you know, basis. And then, yes, we do have some drugs that we can use to sort of um, lower cholesterol um, or these fatty deposits and prevent any complications. And we'll we'll kind of go over that right now. So let's talk about the meds. So uh, they're called cholesterol reducers, and the number one that it's most commonly used are these HMG CoA reductase inhibitors, or commonly called as statins. They are commonly called statins because they all finish in statin, artrovastatin, pravastatin, simvastatin. And um, they basically uh, literally reduce uh, cholesterol, okay? Uh, now, a couple of things to know and teach our patients about them is that they need to monitor their liver enzymes. They can cause muscle pain and weakness to the point that it could progress to rhabdomyolysis, which is sort of like a breakdown of the muscle, uh, severe muscle pain, and it elevates the creatinine kinase levels. Um, and these are not good because whenever they're released into the blood, um, they're filtered through uh, your kidneys, and then it can cause kidney uh, damage or failure if it's too elevated. Also, the statins may cause bleeding when taken with warfarin, so we got to be careful with patients that take anticoagulants like warfarin. Another classification is fibrid um, acid derivatives. They have 
F-I-B-R or fibre um, in between, like in the middle of the word. So phenofibrid and gemfro gemfrozil. Um, these are also commonly used as well. You do want to uh, monitor for GI upsets like nausea and diarrhea and liver enzymes when taken with statins. Um, they also can cause uh, bleeding when taking anticoagulant. And then they could cause hypoglycemia when taking with um, diabetic drugs. All right, the next one is these bile acid sequestrants. They start with coli, whether it has an H or not. So coli cholecystyramine and cholecystibellum. Um, important things about these medicines is that they can inhibit the absorption or, or sort of um, not in, but well, maybe inhibit and kind of cause problems with the absorption of other medications. So they need to be taken in separate one hour before or three or four hours after you give other medications to prevent that. Okay. So that's very important to sort of um, educate our clients about. They can cause bad taste and GI upset, um, so that they don't really taste very good. And as a fact, um, the cholecystibellum, the Welkoch, it's a, it's a really um, big pill, and so it kind of creates this chalky sort of taste in the mouth of the clients. The next classification is cholesterol absorption inhibitors, such as Cetia. I'm not going to even try to pronounce the generic name, but it starts with EZ. Is it Tybe? Is it Tybe? Uh, yeah, it's hard to pronounce, but it's it, we call it Cetia. Um, most of the people will call it Cetia. Same thing, kind of causes GI upset and cannot be used with uh, liver problems, liver patients. Now, they do recommend always taking omega-3 fatty acids because, again, it's the good cholesterol. It eats the bad cholesterol. And so um, you do want to give these with uh, food, okay, because it can cause uh, GI upset. Last of the cholesterols are niacin. And with niacin, um, they have to be given with food. Could, it could be a little hard on the tummy. Um, and it causes this flushing and sort of redness of the face, um, as well as hypotension. Uh, so be careful with this because the patients could develop hypotension. Another classification of medications that we do give patients, and these are these are not to control cholesterol or lower cholesterol. These are to prevent complications from the narrowing of the vessels. It's antiplatelets. So if the, if the blood vessel, the artery in this case, is narrow because of all the, the plaque being built up, platelets start aggregating when there's damage to the wall. And as the platelets aggravate and they stack on top of each other, just sort of like the picture that I have here with the aggregation uh, step, then it blocks, you know, sort of the blood flow and then a clot starts forming. And that clot can dislodge and cause a stroke or, or a heart attack or, you know, you name it, okay? It could, it could cause many issues. So what we do in order to prevent this is inhibit platelet aggregation by an antiplatelet. And some of the antiplatelets are a baby aspirin, 81 milligrams of aspirin, or clopidogrel or Plavix uh, to prevent from platelets to aggregate. So when someone is on an antiplatelet, 
which is not the same thing as an anticoagulant. Um, what we need to teach them is that they are higher risk for bleeding because the platelets do not aggregate, causing the sort of uh, the band-aid on a on a on a wound or on a tear. Also, they can lower your platelet count, and it's actually used to prevent clots from forming. Okay, it does not lower the cholesterol. So that's another important thing to, to mention then. <laughs> okay, so this is a coronary artery disease. There's a lot of teaching that goes with it from medications to risk factors that are modifiable to how do we prevent it. Uh, to maybe the exercise and diet that we recommend, um, and then preventing complications such as clots uh, with antiplatelets. As always, my references are from our book, and every image is from Google or the book. I hope this was helpful, and I'll see you in the next video.